All right, it's uh, 5.30 p.m. on the 22nd of April. I'd like to, uh, if you wish to address the council, we're going to have, first of all, we're going to have the Public Service Committee. If you wish to address the council, please complete the wishing to address the council form located on either end of the counter and give it to either the chairman or the council clerk prior to the beginning of the meeting. All comments must be addressed to the council as a whole. Addressing individual council members or staff is not allowed. Speakers should be courteous in their choice of words and actions and comments, shall be limited to the issues, and cannot involve individuals or staff-related matters. All cell phones and electronic devices used for the uh, communication should be silenced at the beginning of, or the duration of the meeting. I'd like to call the Public Service Committee meeting to order, and we have an invocation by Mr. John Amaday with a pledge. John, let me, there we go. Hit it again, I'm sorry. Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening, Lord, and we ask for your wisdom as we conduct the affairs of the parish, Lord. Help us to make decisions that are fair and just to all involved. And Lord, we ask that your favor and blessings would be upon all the citizens of this parish. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, John. Uh, Ms. Charlie, could you give us a uh, roll call, please? Ms. Chauvin? Here. Mr. Trostclair? Here. Mr. Pledger? Here. Mr. Harding? Here. Mr. Voisin? Here. Mr. Amade? Here. Ms. Champ Mr. Champagne? Here. Mr. Hamner? Here. Mr. Babin? Here. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum present. Thank you, Ms. Charlie. Item one, resolution authorizing the execution of change order number two to the agreement for contractor services with EP Bro Utility Services, LLC, for the 50 MVA transformer replacement at power plant substation number two, project 20-ELT-26. Moved by Mr. Champagne. Second, Second by Mr. Harding. Uh, seeing no lights, members vote your machines. Vote is 9-0. Motion passes. Item number two, resolution authorizing the execution of, of change order number one for the construction agreement for parish project number 21-BLDG-69 Head Start HVAC Renovations, Terrible Parish, Louisiana. Moved by Mr. Pledger. Second. Second by Mr. Hamner. Seeing no lights, all in favor, vote your machines. Vote is 9-0. Motion passes. Item 3, resolution giving notice of intent to adopt an ordinance to dedicate and accept the maintenance, operation of the streets, drainage servitudes, sewers, and rights of way for Evangeline Oak subdivision, energize and accept the street lights, and incorporate Rue Evangeline, Rue Jean-Luc, Rue Jeanette, Rue Elois, and the extension of rude affairs into the enhanced 911 emergency response system for the purpose of providing a better means of locating addresses and calling a public hearing on said matter on Wednesday, May 15, 2024, at 6.30 p.m. Moved by Mr. Amade. Second. Second by Mr. Champagne. Seeing no lights, uh, vote your machines. Motion is 9-0. Motion passes. Uh, item number four, resolution to authorize parish administration to enter into an intergovernmental agreement with the Terrebonne Parish Sheriff's Office to assist in the construction of the Berg Radio Tower. Moved by Mr. Trosclair. Second. Second by uh, Mr. Uh, Harding. Seeing no lights, members vote your machines. Item, all right, 9-0, motion passes. Item number five, consider the introduction of an ordinance to rescind ordinance number 9563 <clears throat> for error therein and to enact a new, or, uh, new ordinance authorizing the re relocation of Terrebonne Parish precinct following location for the election of November 5th, 2024, and all subsequent elections, and call a public hearing on Wednesday, May 15th, 2024, at 6.30 p.m. Moved. Moved by Mr. Hamner. Second by Mr. Voisin. 
Seeing no lights, members vote your machines. Post 9-0, motion passes. Motion to adjourn, Mr. Amade. Second, Mr. Harding. Uh, members vote your machines. I'm, I'm assuming Kim. Yeah. Kim, all right. You need, okay, motion passes. Motion adjourned. I mean, meeting adjourned. notice to the public if you wish to address the council please complete the public wishing to address the council form located on either end of the counter and give it to either the chairman or the council clerk prior to the beginning of the meeting all comments must be addressed to the council as a whole addressing individual individual council members or staff is not allowed speakers should be courteous in their choice of words and actions and comments shall be limited to the issue and cannot involve individuals or staff related matters thank you all cell phones and electronic devices used for communication should be silenced for the duration of the meeting. I'd like to call the Community Development and Planning Committee uh, to order. Um, invocation and pledge uh, by myself. Laura, we come before you and you ask for your wisdom in looking at all of these things and that you would instill upon our hearts to do move us in the right direction in this parish. In Jesus' name, amen. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Miss Charlie, can you uh, give roll call? Miss Chauvin? Here. Mr. Trosclair? Mr. Pledger? Here. Mr. Harding? Here. Mr. Wazin? Mr. Amade? Mr. Champagne, Mr. Hamner, Here. Mr. Babin, Here. Madam Chairwoman, you have a quorum present. Thank you. Okay. Item number one, motion to rescind the condemnation order adopted February 6, 2024 on the residential structure located at 1500 Memory Lane, owned by Julian Brown. Move. Moved Sorry. by Mr. Pledger, seconded by Mr. Carl Harding. Uh, hold up, what did I have to do again? Members vote your machines. Yeah, but I'm looking at the wrong one. Which one do I turn on? None. Okay. I don't do this enough today. Okay. Where's the chilling? Oh. It's past nine zero. Item number two, resolution authorizing the parish president or designee to accept FEMA funding through the FEMA fiscal year 2022 flood mitigation assistance, SWIFT current grant program provided to the parish under a sub-grantee agreement with the Governor's <coughs> Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness in order to evaluate two, in order to elevate two structures damaged by Hurricane Ida. So Moved move by Mr. Champagne, seconded by Mr. Hamner, new lights, members, yeah, oh, you, I'm sorry, Mr. Carl, go ahead. Yeah, the question would be, what are the two pieces of property? Yeah, I, I just want, you don't have to address it. Yeah, I just want to uh, ask, ask what was the address. Actually, we received $390,000, and the parish is only responsible for 43000 right? Hold up. Mm -hmm. Shoot. Get it. Okay, Chris. It's a the, 90 10. The parish isn't responsible for any of it. Any uh, of the non-federal share is paid for by the owner. The owner's okay. The 43000 uh, Okay, then. all right. Probably so. 
I'm good. We can just get the addresses later, I guess. Yeah, I can definitely get those to you. Okay. Okay. Members Bocha Machine. Is that mine? <coughs> Sorry about that. It was off though. Okay. It's not showing. Okay. Uh, resolution has passed. Uh, number three. Resolution authorizing the parish president to amend the cooperative endeavor agreement with the Louisiana Office of Community Development Disaster Recovery Unit for the North Lake Boudreaux Living Mitigation Surge Protection System for project closeout purposes. Second. Moved by Mr. Babin, seconded by Mr. Hamner. Seeing no lights, members vote your machine. Okay, uh, the resolution has passed. Moving on to number four. Resolution giving notice of intent to adopt an ordinance to amend the zoning map of the parish of Terrebonne so as to rezone from R1 single family residential to R3 multifamily residential lots eight and one through eight block one. Catherine subdivision 8938 Norman Street, Homa, Terrebonne Parish, Louisiana. Daniel Turner, applicant, and calling a public hearing on said matter for Wednesday, May 29th, 2024, at 6.30 p.m. Uh, moved by Mr. Fle um, Mr. Harding. Seconded by Mr. Wazan. Okay. I'm too fast. Hold on. Okay, uh, Chris, it, it says on here lots eight, and then it says one through eight. That's not redundant? Why, why are we breaking? Uh, just out of curiosity. It's number four. It just says lots eight, and then one through eight, block one. Bless you. Bless you. Point of information, um, that's... Two points. That's not District One. That's actually um, District Eight. And also, the lot eight. That's one property, and one through eight would be. Um, it's a sort of a trailer court, I guess you can say. But eight doesn't encompass one through eight. I'm not sure. That's, that's what I mean. That's why I'm asking the one question. One through eight's yeah. a block. It's a. It's one block, and there's eight different uh, mm -hmm. properties on that one uh, parcel. Oh. Chris, Chris, Chris. Chris. So, um, I don't know if on your backup material, but the plat, there's a lot extension on the back end of that okay. lot. That, right. That's the one at dash eight. And there's that. a land okay. hook there. I got you. Okay, so it's, I got, thanks. I mean, it's it's basically one lot. It's one lot. On yeah. Norman Street. Correct. Any more five, good. Oh, five. Um, go ahead, Mr. Hammer. I didn't have. Oh. My okay, yeah. member. Okay, uh, hold up. Vote your machines. Sorry. Okay, resolution passes. And on number five, Steve. You're gonna have to uh, teach me how to run this thing. Put the lights on. You know. Yeah, item five is a motion to hold discussion with possible action regarding stronger ordinances and higher fines for dilapidated houses and other structures, junk left in view of the public, tall grass violations, and other public nuisances. Uh, Ms. Wa uh, Ms. Chauvin. 
Okay, so the reason why I put this on here, and I don't know if uh, any of you getting um, a lot of calls on this, but the process for condemnation, and, and I know that the public may not know it, it's tedious and it has to be followed, and, and there's a lot of nuances to it. I, for one, find Ms. Dion and Ms. Camilla, among the other ones in the department, are working very hard on this, but I think that some of the things that are getting in their way is that it's, it's um, you have a grass, long grass, and that same person is getting called on again in two weeks. I mean, summertime is, is way different on long grass because if you own property, you should be cutting your grass anyway, but if you own that property, you would think that because of the neighborhood, you would go in and, you know, get this done. That's not happening, and so it's bogging down uh, Ms. Dion, Ms. Camilla, and the whole department. And so I'm looking at... Um, having maybe more restrictions or a stacking of, um, you know, if you own multiple properties and you're not keeping them up, uh, something to that event. This is, it's out of hand. It's way out of hand in our parish. And it's not just Ida. And I know people go, well, you know, this is, this is all on the hurricane. And it's not because we've had a lot of it in the Chauvin area. We've had a lot of it in the East Homa area well before Ida. And um, it seems to be no, uh, very little personal responsibility on people that own these properties. So I had sent um, legal, Miss Michelle, uh, an email trying to figure out what can we do, what can be done. And I, I know I'm not the only one getting this. It can't be that I'm the only one getting these. But we just had people who purchased land, and it was one of the questions that I asked on that you know, do they have a plan of how they're going to take care of it? And I asked them through email. And it's almost like people are affronted that you're asking, how do you plan to take care of something if you're um, a developer or even if you're just buying up property? And uh, because it poses a problem, they're not actually living on that property. They're they're coming in and, and we would think that they would invest in it, but that's not always the case either. But then you go in this really nice neighborhood, and even in Chauvin, we have these very nice neighborhoods. Everybody's keeping up their lawn, and here's this one guy. He, here come the rats, the mice, the snakes, everything else. I mean, I'm trying to figure out what language can be put in and constitutionally what we can do as a parish to, um, to kind of thwart some of this stuff because it's getting to be— I would say if I get the same property called in, in one department and they have a lot of condemnations and they're trying to, you know, keep up with that part. And you have people just um, thwarting the system, so to speak. Uh, you know, what can we do? Um, I, I really don't want to bog down Miss Dion and, and Miss Camilla. You know, it's, it's already a very tedious um, thing to have to go through. But I have a lot of people calling me about this same type of stuff. Um, Anybody else have any, you know, like, what can we do? What what is what's some options that we have? Parish attorney. Uh, yes, yes, ma'am, councilwoman. We did get your uh, request to look into the matter, and um, in fact, a few months ago, back when President Bajeron took office, he was interested in the same thing that you're interested in now. Um, we did get some drafts started of an ordinance to stack uh, violations and also for people who own multiple properties, then those violations, even if they're not on the same property, would be stacked as the, as a, it, it would be stacked per owner and not per property. Um, but as we got into doing the revisions and we got more people interested in making more um, improvements to the nuisance abatement ordinance. So now we are also looking, in fact, we did prepare um, a draft to have the nuisance abatement um, department be able to go and have um, to clear liens at the expense of the person who had these liens on their property. So in past, in years past, whenever these condemnation orders get um, rescinded, the parish would prepare a cancellation because every time there's a condemnation order, it goes to the mortgage records at the at the courthouse and it creates a cloud on the title. 
So these condemnation orders and these notices of hearings would go and they would get filed on the record in the mortgages. And when these condemnation orders get rescinded or when those properties come into compliance, then we would have to file, um, we would have to uncloud the title on these properties, which required legal to look over the cancellations. And so that was a request that we also had from planning and zoning to have some mechanism in place to have the owners of the properties actually pay to get those cancellations uh, prepared and filed instead of having the parish do that. Um, and there is also, um, I think that this was an email that I told you that we would look into as well. As far as the people who are purchasing these properties from tax sale mm -hmm. and from uh, adjudication from the parish, a lot of times these properties sit because the people who purchase them don't want to spend money on them right. while they're waiting for the redemption period to come up or while they're waiting for their notices to go through. Um, they are required to take care of the property because otherwise they would have to go, uh, they would have to be subject to these violations for tall grass ordinances. And they're, that would eventually lead to more liens and whatnot on the property, which basic, basically would lead to them losing it if they didn't pay for these liens if they came up for tax sale again. Um, so it's a, it's a circle that just keeps occurring. Um, we did look into, you know, what can we do? And, and a staff member at my office helped me out with this. What can we do on the front end on these, on these adjudicated properties that the parish actually sells? Mm -hmm. And so there is provision in the law that allows the parish to put in its ordinance requirements, certain requirements when you sell these adjudicated properties. And we've seen um, an actual instance where uh, Orleans Parish would require the purchasers of adjudicated properties to take care of their properties and keep them in compliance <clears throat> with the nuisance abatement code. Um, you could also put in these ordinances that we would put in a reversionary clause into the sales of those adjudicated properties. That way we could enforce um, these, we can enforce a reversion of the property from those purchasers back to the parish and we wouldn't have to rely on our nuisance abatement code to get us to where we have violations on top of violations, which eventually make it to the tax uh, roll, which eventually make it to tax sale. So there are some things that we can do. And I think what I, what I really, we've been working on it piece by piece at this point, but I really want to roll it all into one. Mm -hmm. And I want to get uh, drafts out to you all so that you can take a look at it. And some of the ex more experienced council persons uh, may have some good ideas that could fit into this as well. Chris Pulaski and his team at Planning and Zoning would probably be, be uh, helpful in getting that package together as well. So there are some things I think that we can do, and I think one of them, one of the major things that we can do is start putting reversionary clauses in those in those packages for those adjudicated properties. I, I, one of the questions that I, that I had on the back side of it was that we have a, a, a property that has four different addresses, maybe even six up to now from what I'm looking at, and they started a process illegally. Um, anybody who doesn't know, the demolition is a free permit um, that they can go and get, and then they're supposed to follow the rules that, um, sure. that has been set forth, but we're coming against um, a whole neighborhood calling me um, each day, texting me each day about all the junk flying all over their place. So they have a number of things that will be in nuisance abatement. So how do we make sure, I mean, is it in the ordinance already, or can we do something that when somebody owns a number of places that they, you know, they can't go outside of it? Like they were already doing something legal in the first one to make sure that they don't do those things in the second, third, and fourth part of it. Um, is that something that, you know, we may have to add to it for those owning more than one property? So I think that we can, we certainly can do that, and that's part of the stacking of the violations. Okay. 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 Thank you. you finished, Ms. Sherwin? Yes. Mr. Hamner? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, hmm? Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Babin. Uh, I mean, Mr. Ms. Chauvin, excuse me. <laughs> um, 
I, I don't really have anything to add to what you just said and what Michelle just said. Uh, I'm just in full agreement with, with with it all. I wanted to tell you that I, I would support anything that can, number one, speed up the process uh, and, 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 and get it done. Uh, I did want to ask, though, uh, it probably would have to ask staff, to, uh, does nuisance and abatement have enough people to cover all the uh, derelict properties that we have? Do, do we need to add more people in the next budget? Uh, I'm not asking for a quick answer on that, but something we need to look at um, to, to speed up the process. You know, we got one or two inspectors, is that correct, that have to go out and inspect the property. Then we got uh, to send a letter out for uh, seven, what is it, seven, 14 days for them to respond. Uh, then, then you got to get it on the, if it's a tall grass issue, you got to get uh, the, the, the contractors to do it. I don't know how long it takes them once it gets, uh, gets on the list, but do we have enough to, uh, people for tall grass? Do we have enough, uh, people in the, on the condemnation side to, uh, uh, keep that process flowing? You know, we, we do have like what, 50 for tomorrow night and, uh, uh, I'm experiencing the same thing, maybe not the same volume, but the same thing that Ms. Chauvin is uh, um, talking about. Um, Mr. Lee, right, you want to respond? Yes, sir. So you're absolutely right. We have we have 45 coming up, I think, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And 45 to 50 is about what I take that planning and zoning and uses to the baby can prepare in a quarter. Mm -hmm. So we identify that bottleneck. From there, we approach South Central Planning commission and uh, inquire about their services. They have condemnation services they offer too. Uh, we compiled our cost on our end, compiled their cost, and we're looking at, at that right now to see if that's a feasible option going forward to, to uh, be able to create more files for y'all to review. So the next step would be, is the council willing to review more files rather than 50 every quarter, maybe 50 every two months? depending on what we can do, All right? So there's a, the capability to increase those files for your review to condemn if we want to go that route. Does that answer your question? Uh, partially, you know, but if we do condemn more properties, mm -hmm. do we have the uh, resources to, if they go to tear down or to do whatever we need to do with them? So that's the second part, right? So. In a perfect world, we condemn something, the owner will take it down. Uh, we are getting better at that. Last year, this time, year to date, I think we had 16, somewhere in that, that number of, of properties that were demolished by the owner. Uh, that number's a lot higher this time around this year, so that's, it's getting better. But the truth is, is that the parish will eat the majority of that cost in the end, right? We, we can sell it, but there will be a lot of liens that have to get paid, and if somebody's not willing to take care of their property, they're most likely not going to pay for those liens that we put on there to take care of their property. So there's a lot of cost involved in that. So on the back end, we are going to be end up paying more. Now, is there opportunity to increase communications and maybe try to find our property owners better and give them a better opportunity to fix their properties? Absolutely. And we're exploring that too. So yeah, you're right, sir. There's, there's many hurdles in this. Nothing about this process is good on any, on any end, but there are ways to, create more opportunity to clean it up faster and hopefully more ways to have our property owners be a little more responsible too. Just one last quick comment. Uh, uh, we, we got, we got, we got to give Ms. Berg some help. She can't possibly cut the grass in the whole parish. <laughs> Absolutely. But she is a shining example of a uh, civic duty for sure. You finished with the hammer? Yeah, I'm good. No, were you done? No. Mr. Babin? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, a lot of the things have been said. I, I, for one, would not have a problem with doing them every two months, okay? And I think everybody here would probably feel the same way. The more we can get done. But, but Kim, just to address just, just a little bit, we have, we have property to condemn, we have adjudicated property, and we have tall grass. We, we need to, to separate them apart. You, you're absolutely right. Uh, 
Camilla and and Dion and that department does a fabulous job. The process the process is just so cumbersome. It takes so long to do it because we have to jump through so many hoops. So I think we've addressed that to a certain extent that we are catching up. And if South Central Planning and the numbers fit in there where we can do more, because we are the judge, jury, and execution of this council. I mean, we we make the final decision on it. I would like to see, and, and it was also addressed that we, we're trying to get more people and more money in the budget where we can hire more people. The time of the year coming up for tall grass is when you're really going to start getting a lot more calls, okay? And, I mean, we're getting them already, but it's going to get worth. So, again, I, I like the idea where you're going with this, to put more meat into it, where we can maybe people hold people's feet to the fire a little bit more. I think that the low-hanging fruit right now would be tall grass. If we can address that area, the other one seems like it's starting to work a, a little bit better. Uh, Chris, you're shaking your head yes, I hope. Am I making sense where I'm going here? Because one thing that bothers me, too, is not only tall grass, especially in our curb and gutter subdivisions, when people cut their grass and then they blow all of the grass into the street, which goes down our drains, which clogs up our drains when we get into a rainy period. I'd like to see in this portion if we can put some meat into that as well. But again, it all boils down to inspectors going out and be able to issue a, a citation or something like this. So it means people and then people in our budget. So that's all I got to say. Thank you. I got, no, you want to speak or Chris? What, Chris wants to speak next. Thank you. I just wanted to touch on uh, staff, but before I do, there already is uh, ordinance about that grass clippings. It's in the drainage portion of the parish ordinances. But with staff, um, you may recall we did double the size of the nuisance abatement staff prior to Ida. I'm glad we did. We've been track. We were tracking the numbers, and they were going up, and um, and we did have that approved um, in the budget and and that year and. So in 2022, we essentially doubled the staff. And and like Mr. Lerad said, I mean, 50 is about the maximum because there's just so much in that due process that has to take place. Um, I like the idea of bringing on South Central Planning to supplement um, our staff because, and I, and I know you've heard me up here saying how long this recovery process is going to take, but at some point in time, we're going to get down to a more manageable level. And even if that's three, four, five years from now, I would hate to bring on all this sta additional staff and then we end up terminating them because, oh, okay, well, now we're down to where we were pre-storm kind of thing. So I like the idea of, of having South Central Planning supplement that. And then also we could shift during those times of the years where tall grass become, you know, April to October, we can shift more of our people onto that and push more towards the South Central on the condemnation side. So it, g it gives us a lot more flexibility. So we're actually uh, very interested in looking at that. So. Thank you, Mr. Pulaski. No, you want to speak now? I got two more lights from Councilman. You want to hear them first or you want to speak? Okay. All right, Noah. Just want to get a little context. So South Central Planning has done this before in Galliano after Hurricane Ida with success. Uh, that was kind of how we found out about it and, and uh, inquired. And I just want to get some numbers uh, from 2023 first quarter to compared to 2023. I'm sorry, 2024 first quarter. Uh, last year, we had only two demolitions by owners and 16 demolitions by the parish. 30 files forwarded to legal for council consideration. This year, in the same time period, we've had... 95 files forwarded to legal for council consideration, 22 demolitions by owners, and 30 demolitions by the parish. So there is progress being made, in fact, to the tune of doubling your staff, it seems like. So I just want to give, you know, that data. Thank you. Mr. Hardy. Um, I've been sitting up here a few years now, and this is not nothing new. I'm pretty sure uh, it was here before I, I was here. And I kind of took a few notes. The word fines. I think the system, the way it is right now, how they're handling things, you know what I mean? I can't um, 
go beyond that part because once you go into fines, there are some can't afford, there are some that cannot afford, and there are a number of circumstances that are involved with some of these properties that we have. I'm in agreement with the multi-property -prop uh, property deal. There are some people here that are uh, uh, around in our parish. They have a number of, of pieces of property. Um, and I, I would assume um, that most of them are rather dilapidated. They are in the low to, to moderate income areas, um, the underserved areas. So it brings about another misfortune because those that are actually housed in these uh, establishments or these uh, rental properties, uh, they are the ones at the end of the day uh, that are suffering because they can't afford to go somewhere else. It's unfortunate that we have predators out there that can be looked at in that way, and the name for them uh, would be slumlords. We can actually, I really would like to have the multiple property people uh, addressed here. I would love to have the standards uh, of people that have rental property and constantly uh, are in a position to actually gain revenue for themselves, but then we have to maintain a particular standard uh, for Turbine Parish. With that being said, the, the way that we have the reporting system, I know we added more staff, uh, has been some questions up here in reference to how it's reported. A person can uh, uh, be anonymous and actually call in a piece of property. They, they can be driving right on by. I think that should be more within us uh, because uh, there are some people that are out there and I know there, uh, as I drive through the parish, I know somebody got to call on them, but nobody has. Their property are not up here. I can speak for my neighbor who didn't have the money. Husband had uh, heart attacks and strokes, did her best to actually maintain her property, but she was forced in a position to actually have her house torn down. So. I am proactive in reference to having the parish clean up the property, but we got to have a heart in doing so. Those that actually have and should be taking care of those multi-properties, nail them. Tall grass, different situation. Uh, we spent, I think we got $750,000 in reference to demos. That might, the charge that I'm hearing that the parish is charging people Let's say, for instance, I'm just pulling out figures because I don't know how the exact figures because I haven't been in that position. I'm hearing ten to twelve thousand dollars for a reasonable house, but then if you go privately, that's five thousand dollars, five and six thousand dollars. That's a big difference. So either the parish is going to make money and actually trying to help people out, or we charging too much to demolish these houses. Just like when the seven hundred fifty thousand dollars came in. We said we're about uh, 75 houses that we can do. We're doing 50 tomorrow. So that's one way to look at it. Uh, the other factor up here is the human side. The nine councilmen up here, that's part of the problem. Because each councilman handles that district and the people that come up, some people they know, some people they don't know. Some people they can talk to, some people they can't talk to. So we push it 30 days down the line, 90 days down the line, some have went even further down the line. I think the way that we handle it up here, what a heart and being fair. That's what this program, I'm all for cleaning up Turbine Parish. I'm all for getting rid of the dilapidated property, but then there are some people that flat out just can't afford it. And then it becomes to a point where they're going to lose their property. And I, I have a couple of moats. Uh, in reference to how we deal with it, you say South Central Planning, the idea came in my head, <laughs> we might as well be like city court. If we that far behind, set up city court, bring them on in there, 
handle it separate by itself. If we had to uh, get special funding, get rid of that out the way, nip it in the bud. But first, we got to come up with how we deal with this nuisance and the problem, handle it like we handle the city court. And if you want to impose fines, which I disagree with, that would be up to, to, to certain people because some can actually uh, afford those fines. And one more thing. I'm glad Mr. Hammer mentioned volume. And I'm very passionate about that. Again, I must, I must state it again so I won't get it kind of twisted. I am for cleaning up Turbine Parish. I am for economic development. I am for everything for the advancement of Turbine Parish. But like Mr. Hammond has said, and I t put that in my notes, just recently, I'm going to speak for me. I think I have a lot of pieces of property in my, in my district. And I think you can go back in the record and see how many times District 2 comes up and the nuisance and the abatement process, it tells me we have an economic problem in the low to moderate income areas. Therefore, some of these things that have to be in place, that's why I say the heart, they have to be in consideration when we say we are receiving a lot of funds, how do we get assistance? We get federal funds that go into Section 8 housing. Go to the multi-property multi uh, multi property people. Some of these people are getting funds from Section 8 housing. Kick them off the program. So they got to have, if we got a Section 8 program, they go in there and they, and they are uh, making sure it meets Section 8 standards. If you have a Section 8 house as the dilapidated, it's just a rundown piece of something people can't afford to move from where they are. Make sure those people with the rental property that's getting money from the parish with these Section 8 programs, I want them to have better pieces of property for these people they're going to be living in. Uh, thank you all very much. I'm kind of passionate. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Harding. Mr. Pleasure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I have, I'm just going to use myself for an example as far as what I do to try and curb some of the phone calls and um, how I deal with um, the nuisance and abatement department and outside of that, um, how I try and help my constituents within District 1 since, as we all know, District 1 is one of the more, uh, I guess you would say, prone to have, um, to be underserved and underdeveloped, so on and so forth. We know that, all right? So, and I'm only speaking for myself, but what I've learned in this short time, in this process, um, and, and also the, with the administration kind of explaining to us where they are with South Central Planning, what have you. I spent a lot of time with in the nuisance abatement department, and I've gotten to know the ladies that work there, and they're passionate about what they do. Um, and I even go out with them when they are um, giving the bad news to the homeowners or the people who might be who might be occupying the. Um, property because it was a uh, the property is actually owned by an estate or something like that and I tend to find the folks who own the property and try and talk to them first get ahead of it so they don't get to the point of being condemned and explain to them the process of how it works I found that that works it works really well okay now, as far as the backlog goes, we're talking about South Central planning, but we, I guess before my time, we allocated so many positions to the nuisance abatement department, and I called nuisance abatement for three months straight, and that girl's not even there anymore. So where she's at, are we going to replace the one lady that's not there anymore? Um, so let's at least have all of our, our slots filled in there before we make the assessment and say we want to outsource that. That's just my opinion, or maybe I missed something there. But if we took somebody out of that department who was there from when I, when I was elected, then that's not really a fair assessment to the workload because the, the people were allocated for the department 
The workload is really heavy now. We take a person out. Naturally, it's going to get even worse. So let's keep that person there or replace that person, train them up to do the job that the person was removed did, and then we make an assessment before we start outsourcing it. And that's just my thoughts on that, to be fair, to make a fair assessment of the, the, the backlog that we have. Because from what I understood in the time um, that I spent working with the department, one young lady took care of the one side of the parish, I guess, east side versus west side, something to that effect, and one's not there now. So it's, it's, you know, let's make sure we make a fair assessment before we just say, well, hey, we're going to do like Galliano or somebody else did as far as um, South Central planning. And, I, and I'm all for that if that's going to make it more, more efficient, yes. But let's make a true assessment with the allocated personnel that we had. That's what I say about that. Um, alluding to what Mr. Harding said, as far as the cost goes, I'm, I think, if I'm not mistaken, they're, they're bid out the, to, to be able to demo the properties we send a bid out for that to be demoed, but then can we get more than one contractor? Maybe, you know, if we I understand we send it out for bid, but knock it down a little quicker, we get two contractors or three or whatever it takes. Assess it just to see if we can kind of chip away at the, the the backlog that we had. Also, Mr. Lee Red mentioned um, that. You know, it's a possibility we can do this every two months. Well, I thought we were already on the record to do it every three months now because the next one is July 20-something, I'm sure, right? All right. Well, there's one tomorrow, and then every three months we're doing it. So I, I guess the, the biggest issue is we have a backlog. Before we outsource this, let's make a true assessment of what we have. If we can bring on more you know, local businesses to our, our contractors, local contractors come in and, you know, give us bids on, on doing it. We, I don't see why we couldn't have two or three or four or however many to, to do the job because if 50 every for the last six months, it's going to continue to happen. And that's just from, uh, from Ida, of course. And that's, uh, that's something we should work through. And again, let's make a true assessment. Let's fully staff like we're supposed to be, like we, we um, we allocated before and then make a true assessment before we bring someone else in. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I'll touch on staff first. So yes, we've had some turnover in nuisance abatement in the past, I'll say year, where we had an employee uh, leave that position to take another position that came available in the parish. So we moved somebody into that position. When we moved somebody into that position that opened up another position in the department or in the division. So then we had to open that one up. And so it had this domino effect. So now we're down back to one final position. It's the, it's the, the, uh, clerical position, like the, the intake on, on a lot of the calls that come in. So we had, uh, some pretty good applicants that came across my desk today. So I hope we can get that position filled within the next, you know, couple of weeks. Um, as far as bids go, so whenever we have, it's not like the grass cutting. Tall grass, we have a contract in place. And that contract, I don't know if it's a period for two or three years. I can't remember. Uh, but that's bid out and we sign it and that, that's who handles it for that period of time. Whereas demolitions, every single one is bid out individually. We go through our purchasing. Sometimes we get three, four responses. And then we have to select from that list. Sometimes we only get one. Like the last time. So there's nothing that the parish can do about how many respondents we get. That's that's dependent upon our contractors, and most of them are local. And, of course, we would prefer that. Um, but uh, that that's with that. Um, as far as pricing goes, I mean, if they're, if they're going that much less you know, on the private side, you know, we need to really look at those numbers hard because uh, that just – doesn't seem right if we're paying 10 to 12 costs i know demolition costs have gone up just like construction costs have gone up but that's a pretty big uh difference there so we need to check into that and then finally on um with regards to compassion dion and camilla have both been uh, uh very adamant about looking for grant opportunities that we could then put some assistance out there for those who would be eligible 
So we're talking about low to moderate income, disabled, elderly, that kind of thing. So we would basically create our own grant program that can help supplement those costs. Um, so they're on the hunt for those grants right now. So that's it. And, and, and one other, uh, just to add on to what you're saying there, just so everybody's clear and they understand, um, and also to allude back to Mr. Harding, but if I'm not mistaken, please help me out, Candace and Chris, but when the bid goes out for the demo, it's not per se per house. It's the equipment cost, the hour, man hours, and whatnot that adds up to what it costs. So it's not just because the house is a three-bedroom versus a five-bedroom. It's based on the time, the equipment used, and that type of thing. Am I correct? Well, you're correct. It's always going to be cheaper for somebody to do it themselves. And we Absolutely. say that over and over again in our office. And, and because we have administrative costs and other things that get added on to it. Right. So it's, it's definitely going to be less for the homeowner to do it themselves. But $5,000 difference seems pretty yeah. alarming. Yeah. And one last thing, I mean, we, we, we're beating up this issue, but I want to give an example of um, some, some positives that have come out of that. And also to, to show that compassion that the nuisance of your, your department, nuisance and abatement has, um, specifically Ms. Dion and also uh, Ms. Camilla, I went out with them to, to, to share the, the, the bad news of the house being condemned and they had a FEMA trailer on the, the property. There was someone occupying the property, a family member, and they had nowhere else to go. So we went out there and we talked with the, the gentleman. We, we really got involved and, and kind of tried to find out exactly what's his plan because the compassion was there. We didn't want to disconnect his utilities and things like that because it was still on the house that was in disrepair, of course. And just in that conversation, I was able to get some information from him, myself, Ms. Brown, and, and Ms. Stewart, and we forwarded that information to our um, Housing and Human Services because the guy had nowhere to go, and forwarded to Ms. Kelly and Housing and Human Services the next day. She called who she needed to call, and she was able to, and, and they were able to get um, get housing for the for the gentleman that lived there. So there are some 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 good things that come out of this, but of course when you say condemnations, it's it's always taken well, as a bad thing. Communication is is the key and, and Dion and Camilla are very good about that. Absolutely. And, and if I encourage everybody out there, if 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 you're having an issue with that or have questions about that process, please call them because you know the worst is when somebody shows up and it's the first time we're we're hearing from that person. You know. Shows up at the hearing. I mean, you all done? Yeah. Ms. Chauvin? Okay. So just to be clear, <clears throat> much of what I'm coming across in, in my district is properties that have been left and people have moved on. So they may have collected insurance money and they're gone. Or it's dilapidated well before Ida. The other part, you know, you have the properties that are purchased by the from the parish. And now it's a tall grass issue. So, so those are some of the things that that I see are properties that are now in estates. Somewhere along the line, we've got to come to a point where people take personal responsibility. You know, um, I get that people get on hard times, and I'm in a community that has underserved people. I would gladly be out there to help somebody, and, and I've done it many times before, but. When you're putting junk in public view and you're hoarding or you're uh, leaving a number of inoperable cars, I don't know how to help you there because you're, 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 you're actually doing it to yourself at that point when, it, when it's those things. Um, but you're devaluing your neighborhood, and it's not fair to your neighbors and such to have to deal with that part of it. And those are the phone calls that I'm getting on that. I've only had out of probably about 350 that I've sent in. I only have two folks that called me because it's LA Restore. And I said, if you send me your paperwork, I will definitely get that to Ms. Dion, Ms. Camilla, and we will make sure that there is an understanding that what you're waiting for. The lady was very grateful we, we got her on that. 
I've helped other people um, with uh, the housing and human services with Kelly that have found another place to live. Um, this is not really about that part of it. And I know that it will encompass some people that have that are going to hit hard times. We have a lot of civic groups. Why don't we call on some of the civic groups maybe to help, you know, in some of these situations? We have tons of churches here. There's tons of youth groups. Why don't we look into that? I mean, you know, tall grass, if it's if it's elderly people that can't cut their grass or can't move stuff, let's utilize what we have here too. So that's kind of what I wanted to say. I'm, I'm all about trying to find solutions because we cannot continue to let, you know, to look around Terrebonne Parish and everything is going to just be degraded. Thank you. Mr. Harding? Yeah, Chris and, and Camilla and Ms. Stewart and everybody else, you know what I mean? When I call over there, we try to work something out. Uh, with the residents uh, that we work with, and there, you have a nice uh, group of people there, and and, uh, and and to a certain extent, I like their firmness. You know, what I mean, it goes to uh, basically what Ms. Chauvin is saying. Uh, I don't like junk in my neighborhood either. I don't like riding past junk in Turbon Parish. Uh, but uh, when you mentioned uh, grants, Mr. Pulaski, uh, that's what I've been work, trying to work with some groups. If we can actually just save the property, stay into the family. Uh, I know a number of people who have actually lost um, some property that their grandmother and them worked for, and now this generation of kids, you know what I mean, is gone. So what I'm trying to do, me personally, and with some special interest groups that we're trying to do, is to bring about economic development through grants and some programs that we can actually provide services for uh, low to moderate incomes in underserved areas, any area that you know, needs need some development. So therefore, uh, that's what I'm working toward, and that I'm, I'm glad you guys are, are working toward the grants to assist those folk uh, with some of their uh, shortcomings. And then uh, I promise you, I'll be trying to work on the other end to just just maintain the property that's been in a family for a couple of generations. That's my objective here. Is it, I, once, once you know, property is. is is, is that a premium if you own it and you're able to take care of it? So um, that's where we are. I appreciate the efforts and the concerns that your the, your staff has and uh, their ability to uh, to work with me as I work with the people. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harding. Mr. Babin. Yeah, just a quick. I appreciate Kim putting this on here and the discussion. You can see will lead to a lot of different things. Uh, again. Those of us that have been on here a long time, uh, like Mr. Pledge said, working with them, we, we've all done those things to try to help some of the people out that, that are coming up for condemnation. So, uh, you know, I, I think it's good that everybody gets involved with them because they are a very good staff. They are very compassionate and they need, and they stern when they need to be stern. Okay. Because we, we all know that, uh, some people try to pull the wool over our eyes as much as we hate to say it. All right. Second thing is, I just want to make sure the public understands the, the numbers that were thrown out here, $5,000 worth versus $12,000. I don't want anybody thinking that the parish is making money off of this. We have a purchasing department, and a department that goes out and gets a bid on these things. Our cost to do those things are much more, in terms of the overhead cost, uh, administrative cost, or more than what somebody can do if they do it on their own. But the parish is not making money off of tearing down houses, okay? The cost is borne by that individual to that contractor. That contractor is charging Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government $10,000 versus $5,000, and we are not making a dime off of that. So I just want to make sure that's clear. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Babb. I got a couple uh, comments, you know, for the lights. Uh, you know, kind of piggybacking off of several things, people's comments, you know, in in the last year and a half, we probably condemned close to 200 properties in the parish. And, you know, we we had uh, $750,000 of, of federal monies to uh, to help with, with some of these uh, demolitions. And that won't go you know, that won't hardly make a dent in 200 plus another 50, we're gonna do another 50 down the road. 
Uh, so, you know, the parish definitely cannot afford to tear down all these houses as fast as we could condemn them. I mean, I don't see how that could pra be practical and, and still operate the parish the way we operate the parish. So uh, one question I have is, you know, I know I know we put it out for bid and it may be on a per per house bid. I'm not sure exactly what the bidding process is, but maybe if we can localize and group some of these properties in close proximities together and, and put those out for a common bid, you may be able to get a better a better rate because of mobbing and demobbing and moving equipment and stuff. You know, within a short period, we may might be an option to look at something like that. Um, you know, to, to try to you know cut some of the, op the cost of, of demolishing. And and that's just an idea I got. Uh, next thing is, um, you know, Mr. Harding made reference to a lot of people. You know, there's many people that that that. Are, you know, can't afford these fines and can't afford, you know, different things. But you don't need money to keep your property clean. You don't have to have money to keep your property clean. Now, if you, if you got repairs in the houses, major repairs and stuff, that's a different story. But just the, the trash and the the, uh, the abandoned vehicles and, and just the stuff that's accumulated in the yards that, that caused nuisance abatements to get out there, and, and go through this process, that costs the parish of money anyway. I mean, just for us having to go out there and make reports on it costs us money. So we paying for that, you know, I say we, the you, the people are paying for it because it's tax dollars that are, that are being wasted. And and these and then we got to find the people. Then we got to put liens on the property because we got to go out there and clean it or hire somebody to go clean it. And then we, uh, then we got to put a lien on the property. Those people don't need to have liens on their property, and they don't need money to keep it clean. Keep the grass cut and keep it clean. You don't need money, and you don't need, uh, you know, the, the parish shouldn't have to be doing that. So that's just a couple of things I want to bring up. I uh, see Ms. Chauvin. I just had one more thing. Uh, the clippings that Mr. Babin uh, referred to earlier, <clears throat> Can we get like a signage like for social media, not not to put in neighborhoods or stuff like that, but signage for social media like we can we can share it out there from Terrebonne Parish about the ordinance and the importance of why some people I'm telling you, sometimes you're not even thinking when you're doing it. So it's not kind of getting into your head that you probably shouldn't be pushing it out to the road and going into the drainage. Maybe we can do something as simple as that. Have Robbie's group you know, put um, a post out um, about the importance of not doing that, especially in the summer months and when we hit the rainy season and, and, hurricane, and, all, and hurricane season and all that. Not that we're having any of them because we're not. <laughs> but just thinking that that would be just a, simple, just a simple thing to get out there on social media. Thank you. Mr. Pleasure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, question for, for, um, for Chris or whomever, I guess, can answer it. The last time we put it out for bid, um, we had just one, of course, one uh, one contractor to respond. Is that contractor going to have to take care of these that we have coming up tomorrow and the following? You know, just a question there. So it's per house that we put it out to bid. Okay. So, and Dion had sent me a text a few moments ago. She said, right now, because there's so many going on and we have contractors that are becoming aware of this, we're getting multiple <coughs> respondents. So that's good news. Yes. Sir. But we don't have one contractor that does them all. Now, we do for tall grass, and it's a one-year contract with, uh, I think it's, let's see, uh, one year with two one-year options. That's, yeah. that's how that contract's set up. Okay. But so for tall grass, yes, but for demolitions, it's per house. Okay. All right. So it's one house per per bid. So we right. don't but what um I, what he said, what Steve said is I mean I definitely makes, want to explore that yes. because we just have to make sure how we keep them separate because you know we don't want 
you know, Candace's house mixed up with my house kind of thing, right? We got to keep those separate. Sorry, but you okay. need to fix your house. Fix the grass. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that that would be a that would be a great idea to do that, and maybe that might be a driving force that can you know kind of bring yeah, it down. That's some. a good idea. But at the same, but at the same time, you're gonna. It's still equipment and man hours. You know what right. I mean? You're still going to be, yeah. And some still houses are bigger be, than others, right? So, so it's would, kind of, but exploring it would really help. Yeah, right. Exploring It'd it would have would to really be help. line items on the estimate. Yeah, and and one one last thing is yeah. also what um, what was mentioned as far as you know it costs for people to take care of their properties. What I share with my folks is the fact that you know, and I get a lot of people who who say that. Um, you know, it was my grandma's, grandma's, grandma's house. Well, guess what? I would take, would grandma want that house to look like that? You know, so we have to share that with folks too as well. Hey, listen, if it's your grandma's house, let's take care of it. Because I know I would take care of my grandma's house. Um, but anyway, that's it. Thanks. Thank you. John, you pulled your light? Okay, no problem. Okay. All right. Uh, motion to adjourn, Mr. Babin. Second, Mr. Pledger. All of vulture machines, please. <laughs> old dog and old tricks. We adjourn. Thank you. Yeah, we're putting this right in the Yeah, it's still not showing up? No, it's not. I don't know. No, it's just right there. Yeah, it's right just right there. there. I think it should be. I mean, quiet will do it. Then we can work on it after. Yeah, there he is. Oh, so you can take yeah, it voting control. So yeah, it's on. It was on. Yeah, it was on camera control. All right, but it Somebody should be on hit. voting control and usually. Yes. Okay. So yes. we need to learn. To get another yeah. Gotcha. We can. I plan on talking to uh, Brian about writing something. Yeah. Yeah. So we're good. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Out how to turn this way. Uh, where's my chair, man? There we go. Uh, Y'all ready? First time I ever did that. All right. We'll call the uh, Policy, Procedure, and Legal Committee to order. Uh, notice to the public, if you wish to address the council, please complete the uh public wishing to address the council form located on either end of the counter and give it to either the chairman of the council or the council clerk prior to the beginning of the meeting. All comments must be addressed to the council as a whole. Addressing individual council members or staff is not allowed. Speakers should be courteous in their choice of words and actions and comments shall be limited to one to the issue and cannot involve individual or staff related matters. Thank you. All cell phones and electronic devices Used for communication should be silenced for the duration of the meeting. I'll now call the meeting to order with the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance led by Mr. Brian Pledger. Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening. Give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we may better be able to serve Terrebonne Parish. We ask that you bless this country, bless this state, and bless this parish. These and many other blessings we ask in your darling son Jesus' name. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. We now have roll call. Ms. Chauvin? Here. Mr. Trustclair? Here. Mr. Pledger? Here. Mr. Harding? Here. Mr. Vazen? Here. Mr. Amity? Here. Mr. Chopin? Here. Mr. Hamner? Here. Mr. Babin. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum present. Thank you. Item one, approve the co-sponsorship request from East Side Day for the Big Business Basketball Tournament. 
Business Expo to be held on June 15th, 2024 from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. at 2814 Percy Gabriel Street, Homa, Louisiana. Uh, no action is required on this. It has been removed from the agenda. Item two, approve the co-sponsorship request from the Rotary Foundation of Homa Terrebonne for the swinging tribute to the Rat Pack, be, uh, best happy hour on the Bayou event to be held from 5.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. on May 29th, 2024 at the Homa Municipal Auditorium. Move. Moved by Mr. Trosclair, Second. seconded by Mr. Amity. Uh, seeing no lights, members vote your machines. Oh, you had a... No, that was old. They, they fixed the machine right before uh, I started, so the, no, no lights are showing up. Vote again? Oh, Sam is not there. Yeah, vote again, oh, I guess. Okay. There we go. There we go. Uh, nine votes for all. Doesn't surprise me. We'll all be at that happy hour, right? All right, item three, approve the co-sponsorship request for the New Zion Baptist Church Gospel Festival to be held June 8th, 2024, from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the downtown courthouse square. Moved by Mr. Hardy, Second. seconded by Mr. Pledger. Um, seeing no lights. Uh, members vote your machines. Nine votes for in favor, uh, motion passes. Well, I'll be there after the happy hour on the uh, right before. Uh, item four, approve the co-sponsorship request from the Terrebonne Parish Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness for the first annual Emergency Preparedness and Response Summit to be held May 13, 2024 from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Barry P. Bonvalence Civic Center. Mm. Moved by Mr. Babin. Seconded by um, Mr. Champagn. Uh, members, seeing no lights, members vote your machine. All uh, votes 9 to 0. Motion is approved. Item 5, resolution indicating the intention of the Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government, State of Louisiana, to approve the two-year appointment of Mr. Steve Crispino as the director to the Board of the Louisiana Local Government Environmental Facilities and Community Development Authority, uh, as provided by Chapter 10-D of Title 33 of the Louisiana Revised Statutes of 1950, as amended. Moved by Mr. Babin, seconded by Mr. Champagne. Um, seeing no lights, members vote your machines. Okay, votes nine to zero, motion pa resolution passes. Motion to adjourn by Mr. Babin, seconded by Mr. Harding, members vote your machine. Meeting adjourned. Notice to the public, if you wish to address the council, please complete the public wishing to address the council form located on either end of the counter and give it to either the chairman or the council clerk prior to the beginning of the meeting. All comments must be addressed to the council as a whole. Addressing individual council members or staff is not allowed. Speakers should be courteous in their choice of words and actions and comments shall be limited to the issues and cannot involve individuals or staff related matters. 
All cell phones and electronic devices used for communication should be silenced for the duration of the meeting. I'd like to call the Budget and Finance Committee meeting to order. Invocation will be done by Mr. Kevin Chauvin. And I heard, I mean, Kevin, Kevin Chauvin, I am so sorry, guys. And also, I heard a young lady in the back named Rebecca. She said the Pledge of Allegiance so gracefully. I would like for her to come up after Mr. Champon says his um, prayer or does the invocation, and I want her to say the Pledge of Allegiance for her. Please, the sister, out with that, Jason. Put her in the mic now. Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion. Allow us to grow closer as a group and nurture the bonds of community. Fill us with your grace, Lord God, as we make decisions that might affect the residents of Terrebonne Parish. We ask these things in your name. Amen. 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 Yeah, both of them. Come on, both. Come on, come on. It was her. Yeah, that's all right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Wait on you. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the flag for which it stands, one nation under God, and it is all teachers for all. Thank you, ladies. All right. Ms. Charlie, can we get a roll call? Ms. Chauvin? Here. Mr. Trostclair? Here. Mr. Pledger? Here. Mr. Harding? Here. Mr. Voisin? Here. Mr. Amade? Here. Mr. Champagne? Here. Mr. Hamner? Here. Mr. Babin? Here. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum present. Thank you, Ms. Charlie. <coughs> Item one. Concurring with Parish Administration for the state contract purchase of three trucks for the Solid Waste Department from Lamarck Crescent City Ford. Second. Moved by Mr. John Amadee, second by Mr. Steve Trosclair. Seeing the lights, members, vote your machines. <laughs> Votes nine to zero, motion passes. Item number two, concurring with the Paris administration to award request for bids, RFBS, received for Hurricane Ida damage repairs for the coroner's office to Freetown Builders, LLC, and authorizing the Paris president and or his designee to execute the contract and to provide for related matters. Moved by Mr. Danny Babin, second by Mr. Carl Harding, seeing no lights, members vote your machines. Votes nine to zero, motion passes. Item number three, to authorize Paris administration to execute an agreement between Terrebonne Paris Consolidated Government and Haydell Family Practice for Medical Services at the Terrebonne Paris Criminal Justice Complex. Moved by Mr. Danny Babin. Second by Mr. Clayton Wazan. Seeing no lights, members vote your machines. Votes nine to zero, motion passes. Item number four, to authorize Paris administration to enter into a service agreement on behalf of the Terrebonne Paris Consolidated Government, TPCG, with Otis Elevator Company for the maintenance of the elevators at 7910 West Main Street, home of Louisiana. Moved by Mr. Clayton Wazan. Second. Second by Mr. Clyde Hamner. Got a couple lights here. Mr. Steve Trosclair. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a couple of questions. First off, <clears throat> I mean, a thousand seventy dollars a month. What is that? Something that's required by an insurance company, or I mean, why we just had these elevators completely redone in the last year, year and a half or so, and that just seems like a lot to uh, to be on an annual monthly uh, a monthly uh, inspection uh, fee. And the second thing I have is on the terms of renewals. It says the commencement date is 11 23 So are we retroacting this, this contract? And if we are, why? Thank you. Um, Michelle? Thank you, sir. 
Um, this actually is a contract that came over from the Whitney Bank, the Hancock Whitney Bank building. They required the assignment of the contract to come over um, effective on the date of the sale. And we are retroactively dating it because the date of the sale was um, in November 2023. So the parish would be required to pay the maintenance on the, um, the service contract instead of the Hancock Whitney Bank building. Um, and... I don't know, and you had mentioned something about the parish maybe had just redone the elevators, but I'd... That's you, the SBL uh, district. Okay. I figured that once we started talking about Hancock Whitney Bank, that would be resolved. Um, this is something that we we took over because we purchased the Hancock Whitney Bank building. Okay, so this, this was an existing contract? Yes, sir. Through it. Okay, yes, thanks sir. a lot. Thanks, Mr. Trust Clair and Ms. Um, Ms. Neal. Um, seeing no further lights, members vote your machines. The vote is eight to zero, motion passes. Item number five, consider the introduction of an ordinance declaring one vehicle from Homa Police Department as surplus and authorizing said item to be disposed of by any legal approved methods and calling a public hearing on Wednesday, May 15th, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. Move Ms. Kim Chauvin, second by Mr. Carl Harding. Seeing the lights, members vote your machines. Votes nine to zero, motion passes. Item number six, consider the introduction of an ordinance to amend the 2024 adopted operating budget of the Terrible Parish Consolidated Government for the following items and to provide for related matters. Item number one, utilities, electric distribution, $350,000, dedicated emergency fund, $2,648,949, dedicated emergency fund, $6,525,690, dedicated emergency fund, $757,000 and item number five, <clears throat> drainage, $2,000 and calling a public hearing on said matter on Wednesday, May 15th, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. Moved by Mr. Danny Babin, second by Mr. Kevin Champon. Uh, got a couple of lights, uh, Miss Kim Chauvin. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kind of wondering where would we find the various street light repairs? I mean, what streets? And where would we find that for three hundred and fifty thousand? Miss Candice, you want to answer that? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, Ms. Chauvin, these are some actual <clears throat> very late submitted invoices for Hurricane Ida street repairs. We have a list. We'd have to pull all the invoices for you and get that list, and which we can do if you would like. Um, but it is something that we've been going back and forth with trying to get FEMA to reimburse and what do we need to do? And it's determined that they were ineligible. So that's why we're recognizing that budget amendment right now. Okay, thank you. You're good, Ms. Chauvin? Yes. All righty, thanks, Ms. Candace. Mr. Hardy? Uh, yes, Ms. Candace and I, uh, we have spoke. And for clarity and for the public to, uh, to have some information because it's going on to, uh, for us to accept this on Wednesday. There's some negatives and positives in reference to two, three, and four. Uh, could you uh, please, Ms. Uh, Mom? Ms. Candace? Thank you. Um, yes, sir, Mr. Harding. So the $2.6 million dedicated emergency fund, item number two, that is us recognizing some revenue that has come in already from FEMA. Um, so it's on top of what we've collected in 2023 and 2022 and 20, well, we didn't collect any in 21. Um, so we're going to be, you'll receive these on the agendas probably a lot as we go through the year, because we're starting to get some money from FEMA, which is okay. a great thing. Um, the 6.5 million, which is the next item that is recognizing the expenses to date in 2024 for hurricane Ida repairs. So you're going to start seeing that too, because now that we've got some FEMA project worksheets obligated, it's going to start moving forward. Um, and the 757000 if y'all remember back in 2021 after the storm, we issued a $50 million bond based on FEMA revenue coming in. This is us paying that interest payment, so we're recognizing it as a budget amendment. 
So the six point five million and the seven hundred and fifty seven thousand are expenses going out, and the two point six is a recovery of it and has some revenue coming in. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harding. Thanks, Ms. Candace. Mr. Charles Clair. Yes, Candace. <clears throat> the seven fifty seven you said was interest interest payment on that bond. Uh, when and when are we going to start working towards the principal of that bond? And is some of this two point six million going to be towards that? Yes, sir. So now that we have settled insurance and starting to get FEMA PWs coming in and being obligated, we will start paying back um, that fifty million dollar of revenue bonds. One thing to note is the seven hundred and fifty seven thousand interest payments is reimbursable by FEMA as well. So once we start paying down on the bonds, we'll submit the interest payments to FEMA to get that reimbursed too. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Trust Claire. Miss, thanks, Ms. Uh, Candace. Uh, Mr. Babin? Yeah, I, I just kind of wanted to re We have to outlay some money knowing that we are going to get reimbursed for it. It's simple and pure. That's why we had to borrow the $50 million to start off with. But you have told us a number of times that the interest is reimbursable from FEMA. So that's a good thing. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Babin. Um, Ms. Candace, just a question for you. I noticed you said we have revenue coming in. Is any of that um, reimbursement? All of it. All of it. Okay. All right. Members, vote your machines. Votes nine to zero. Motion passes. Item number seven, motion to hold discussion with possible action regarding the status of the awarding of the solid waste RFP. And we do have one um, speaker card in regards to that, Mr. I'm assuming, I, I can't really read it. Roddy Mathern. Roddy Mathern. Come on up, sir. Please state your name and address for the uh, for the record, please, sir. Uh, 5764 Vacari Street, home of Louisiana. I'm uh, Roddy Mathern, the CEO of uh, Pelican Waste and Debris. And I just kind of, you know, I didn't get a chance to talk last time when that thing, but I just want, you know, um, to tell you, thank you all for giving us opportunity to bid. We do the residential contract uh, for Terrebonne Parish. I've been in the waste business for 41 years, a company called Sweetie prior to that, and we've held the contract with Sweetie since 1998 until uh, the college sold it. And then I went work for another company for a little while. And then me, Chris LaPere, and Corey Colley started Pelican Waste about 10 years ago, pretty close to 10 years. I've been doing the parish kind of look back at what we do you know we've in the last six years in the last almost 10 years we bought over 20 million dollars worth of trucks and five percent of that was tax dollars that came to Terrebonne Parish that we spent in Terrebonne Parish we employ just in in Terrebonne Parish over 100 employees so we are a local and we we live locally the Calais lives locally in Terrebonne myself live uh, on Vacari Street and been in the parish for a long time so uh, whatever decision y'all make, you know, um, I'm fine with. Um, just, you know, knowing that we'd like an opportunity, even with our residential contract, being a local company, and we give back. We probably do over about $300,000 a year in, in tax. That's not counting all the employees that have salary, you know, <laughs> payroll and salaries that give back as well. So it just kind of went to give that. I don't want to take too much of y'all time, but I just wanted y'all to understand where we were coming from on this uh, thing too. So, and look, I know the Bovalands for a long time. I, I would have been there. I'd be up here too. So appreciate your opportunity. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McTherney. And I really, we really do, um, really do appreciate your gracefulness to come up and share that, uh, share that with us. Um, moving forward. Um, I wanted to just, ask for an update on said uh, said RFP. I know based on the last time we did get legal opinion to forward that to um, back to the, the committee. And I see I have Miss uh, Miss Neal's light. Go ahead, Miss Neal. Yes, sir. Um, I did speak with Miss Ellis and Mr. Nakan, and I understand that the evaluating committee is meeting tomorrow to retabulate and recalculate, and we should have a response really soon from them. Thank you, ma'am. That's all I have. 
Motion to adjourn by Mr. John Amadi and second by Mr. Miss Kim Chauvin. Members vote your machines. The vote is nine to zero. Good evening. <laughs>